So we think about a few different themes that we're seeing out there in the market when it comes to distributed API management and this idea of building out an API platform. Typically what we're seeing, uh, you know, as, as far as the goal for many of these API platform teams is to build an ecosystem that, in which development teams can live and thrive when they're working to build out their own API ecosystems. So with ConConnect, there's a few different ways that we can actually drive this idea of building out an API platform. And we can do that via Kong's extensive plugin ecosystem. So what this allows is for us to actually uh, yeah, build out a topology of a policy, right? That developers will have access to and be able to use to uh, achieve different bits of functionality in their API flows. Uh, Kong supports roughly a hundred different plugins that cover a number of different functional areas, including, but not limited to, uh, authentication, security, transformations, observability, right? And so API platform teams can actually take take these plugins and these policies and start to build out a blueprint of what good looks like when development teams are going to market with their APIs. And with this idea of being able to uh, have governance over these distributed gateways and hence the APIs that are being propagated to the gateways, these API platforms can, API platform teams can do things like establishing uh, security models that ensures that whenever a development team is going to go to market with a brand new API, that it's being exposed in a secure, efficient, and consistent way. And that, you know, the, not just the API platform team, but, you know, DevSecOps and, you know, the total organization will have confidence that they're not exposing a vector for breach. So to see a quick example of how we can do this in practice within Kong, what I'm going to do is come back to connect and we're going to jump into the research development runtime group. Now in this runtime group, we'll see that I actually have a gateway service created. This can be acting as an egress for myself as a developer that wants to consume chat GPT via open AI. Now we'll see, uh, as a part of the platform team, what I've enabled on this particular API are a couple of plugins. So what we've done is we've added an OpenID Connect plugin to make sure that every developer that's wanting to come in and uh, you know consume the ChatGPT API will have to provide their own uh, client credentials to authenticate with the gateway prior to being able to leverage the, the ChatGPT API. That way we're able to govern and regulate which developers are actually coming in and consuming these APIs. We're also applying a request transformer advanced plugin to the API. So we don't want our developers to have to know what our organization wide API keys look like for this chat GPT API. So what we're able to do is actually as a part of that request, it's going out to open AI. We're going to annotate that request on the way out and add the API key you know, for the open API uh, API. So we secured the API uh, as a part of the request process. We're injecting that API key. And the next thing we want to do is just make sure that we don't have a single developer that's going to you know, over consume this particular API. Right now, as we know, OpenAI and ChatGPT can get rather expensive, yeah, you because know, it's based on consumption, right? So we want to establish a pattern where, uh, you know, developers can only consume up to you know five ChatGPT requests per minute. Again, for the purposes of demo. So what this translates to, I'm, I'm now going to bring up Insomnia, which is a design debug and testing tool. It's owned and operated by Kong and show what it looks like from the developer point of view if I'm going to consume this API that I'm proxying through the Kong Gateway instance. So as I bring up Insomnia, we'll see that I'm actually providing a client ID and secret here. And then if I execute a request, it's actually going to be pro proxy through Kong and actually hit the OpenAI API. And then we'll eventually get a response back uh, with a extended prompt based on you know, the content that we were requesting. Now we'll notice since we've applied that security plugin in the form of OpenID Connect, if I don't pass a client ID in secret, we're actually not going to pass authentication at the gateway level itself and return. We'll receive a 401 or authorized when we try to consume the API. Likewise, if I re-enable authentication, what we'll notice is if I go in and try to execute many requests against this API, I'll eventually approach that threshold uh, for that we've set in the rate limiting advanced plugin for that chat GPT API. And as a developer, I'll receive a 49 too many requests. So that's just a really quick example of how in a distributed fashion, we can actually manage uh, yeah, APIs that are running on a variety of different ecosystems yeah, within our organization. 